1955, Walt Disney opened an amusement park that revolutionized the industry and created a new form of entertainment, the story-driven theme park. Walt said that his idea for this park, which is called Disneyland, would be a simple one. It'll be a place for people to find happiness and knowledge. It'll be a place for parents and children to share pleasant times in one another's company. A place for teachers and pupils to discover greater ways of understanding and education. Disneyland will sometimes be a fair, an exhibition, a playground, a community center, a museum of living facts, and a show place of beauty and magic. It will be filled with the accomplishments, the joys and hopes of the world we live in. And it will remind us and show us how to make these wonders a part of our own lives. Well, Disney's simple idea was very successful. His fantastic vision was brought to life by uh, an amazingly talented group of artists and designers and engineers that he dubbed collectively the Imagineers. And together, Walt and the Imagineers created a magical world that allowed guests to transcend their everyday experiences and to discover new ideas and new possibilities. Well, how cool would it, would it be for us to say the same thing about our schools? Now, let's take Walt's vision for Disneyland and tweak it just a bit and insert our schools. Our schools will be a place for people to find happiness and knowledge. There will be places for parents and children to share pleasant times in one another's company. There will be places for teachers and pupils to discover greater ways of understanding and education. Our schools will sometimes be fairs, exhibitions, playgrounds, community centers, museum of living facts, and show places of beauty and magic. They will be filled with the accomplishments, the joys and hopes of the world we live in. And our schools will remind us and show us how to make these wonders a part of our own lives. Wow. <laughs> Imagine. Unfortunately, many schools today still look like the 19th century factories that many were modeled after. The students in this 1905 classroom would be very familiar with how we do many schools today. Now, yeah, the dress codes changed and the technologies changed, but how we do school often has changed very little. But change it can. For many years, I've been exploring ways that we could take Disney's vision for Disneyland and make it more in line, or make our schools more in line uh, in the ways that we teach and learn with, with, with that vision we talked about. Um, over the course of many visits to, to the Disney parks with my, my wife and my sons, I developed this real appreciation for the Imagineers. Um, they, they have this ability to create these immersive environments that can literally transport you anywhere in the world from the rolling waters of the Mississippi River to the snow-capped peaks of the Himalayas. Well, we can create similarly immersive environments in our schools that will engage our students. Well, how do we do it? Well, we look to the Imagineers for inspiration. So what do they do? Well, the Imagineers begin with a process known as blue sky thinking. Anyone ever heard of this? It's the problem-solving process in which no idea is a bad idea. You see, participants in blue sky thinking are encouraged to, to think big. They're encouraged to dream it and then do it. Um, it's this uninhibited uh, thinking that will lead to innovative solutions to problems. Well, I would argue that today American education is in desperate need of blue sky thinking. We need some big ideas from our teachers, from our parents, from our communities, and primarily from our students as they all work together to redesign 20, American education for the 21st century. The most important thing I think, or one of the most important things I think I've learned from the Imagineers is their belief in the power of story. You see, they understand and they'll tell you that the most important element 
of any attraction at Disney is the story. You see, we're wired for stories. Uh, we love stories. Stories have the ability to engage us, to teach us, and to challenge us to action. Um, Disneyland was created in order to bring Walt's stories to life, from the, to take them from the silver screen into our living, breathing world. Every ride at Disney has a story to tell, and all of the places uh, or the spaces that surround those rides are designed to engage your senses to help transport you into that story. The Imagineers do a brilliant job of this. Well, how do they do it? Legendary Imagineer, uh, Imagineer John Hinch said that all thinking is conceptual and begins with seeing, hearing, touching, and sense perception. Now, now think about that. If this is true, then we can shape thoughts through our senses. Now, if you've ever been to a Disney park and walked through it, you know what I'm talking about. They do a brilliant job with this. Anyone know what this place is? The Haunted Mansion. The Haunted Mansion. Thank you. You have a winner. Man, place freaked me out as a kid. <laughs> um, you've been there, anyone? That was one of those places that, you know, you're like, but I don't want to go. And, and after you finish, you're like, come on, let's do it again. Uh, it's a really cool place because every element is designed to tell a story. So as you're, you're walking through line, the line to get into the place, you pass these tombstones. And when a nine-year-old sees eyes on the tombstone begin to move, you know, that really freaks you out. Should have been a red flag. Hey, there's dead people here. And so as you walk into the Haunted Mansion, uh, it's cold, there's cobwebs, there's this funky smell, the, um, the attendants don't smile, and then there's that, that creepy organ music. You know, it's really quite perfect. <laughs> um, they do such a job, a good job, of taking every element of design to engage your senses to help tell the story of the Haunted Mansion. From the colors to the, the, um, the smells, everything uh, is used in a way to transport you from your everyday existence into this special place. If you've ever baked cookies before an open house when you're trying to sell your house, you know what I'm talking about <laughs> with the power of sensory perception. You see, we can do the same thing in our schools. We can bake cookies before every class. I'm just joking, kind of. <laughs> that would be great. But what we can do is that we can use every, um, we can consider everything in a school, in a classroom, a design element to be carefully shaped to tell the story of the learning that take, that's taking place there. So we're talking about from furniture to lighting to the colors on the walls <laughs> to the food that we, that we serve our children, everything is used to tell a story. It can stick, those elements can be used to set the mood and, and enhance the tone and impart a story of whatever you're teaching, be it math or social studies or English or science. I've done this for years in my own classroom. Um, this is a picture of my second period ancient history class from 1999. Um, that's me in the middle with the gray shirt on. That's not me with the orange hair. Although I do work with that kid now. And it's, it's awesome when you get a chance to, to have a kid grow up and work with you. Uh, this picture has been in every one of my classrooms and every office I've had since the kids gave this to me in 1999. It's a reminder of an amazing year of laughing together and crying together and playing together and learning together. You see, like the Imagineers, I was very careful to craft a space that kids would see as special, that sent the message that this is a place that's out of the ordinary where it's safe to learn. So from the movie posters I put on the wall to the um, student art that, art that I displayed, to the music that we listen to every day, to the toys that we put out, and yes, high schoolers do play with toys, and don't knock it till you try it. And to, all the way to that, that apple cinnamon air freshener that I used to kind of uh, disguise that musty smell in a portable, but really kind of give that home feel 
but ended up with like a musty apple cinnamon feel. The kids still liked it for some reason. Everything was, was designed to let the kids know, hey, Coach Riddle's room is a safe place. Not only to learn about history, but also to learn about life. And like the Imagineers, I understood that those design elements are critical, but I also understood the power of story and the power that stories have to engage your students, especially when you make it relevant to their lives. So I taught history and mythology with Star Wars. Um, it's really quite awesome. Uh, there are connections to be made from uh, everything from ancient Roman history to uh, the rise and fall of Nazi Germany to the American West to Eastern philosophies. But, but most, more importantly, in my class, uh, we looked at the mythological elements that related to Star Wars and how each of us progressed through life through different stages and we all had the potential to be heroes ourselves. A few months ago, one of my former students, Richard, who's actually in that picture you saw, Richard sent me a Facebook message and said, hey, Coach Riddle. Oh, they still call me Coach Riddle, and I love it. Um, hey, Coach Riddle. I tell people all the time about the connections between mythology and Star Wars and how you made it apply, apply to our lives. I taught, I taught that to Richard 14 years ago, <laughs> and he's not the only one. You see, powerful stories told well that, are, that will engage the senses and they'll elicit a, an emotional response that creates learning that lasts. I still use stories to convey important ideas and, and you can too. And my question to you tonight is, what's your story? What's your story? What are you trying to convey about yourself? What are you trying to convey about your business? About your class? about your family, about your life. What's your story? Socrates said, know thyself. Find your story, give voice to it, and then use it to influence others. Well, probably the most important thing I've learned from the Imagineers is the value of play. Now, um, Disney understood how important play was. He wanted to create a place where the young and the old could play together. He understood that we learn while we play, and so every inch of a Disney theme park is designed to be playful. So what's the big idea about play anyway? Well, it's this. As award-winning Disney producer Don Hahn says, play is the welcome cousin of creativity. Now think about that for a minute. Play is the welcome cousin of creativity. If you've ever visited uh, the offices of Pixar or Lucasfilm, you understand what I'm talking about here. You see, think about this. When were you most creative when you were a child? I'll bet it's when you were playing. Did you ever use your imagination when you played? Did you ever make your own toys? Raise your hand if you ever made your own toy. Raise your hand if you ever made a fort or a clubhouse out of pillows and blankets and sheets. I have a question for you, my friends. Why did you stop? Why did you stop? You see, play is the incubator for creativity and problem solving. It allows us to experiment without fear of failure. If we know that we learn from play, then why in the world do we ever tell kids, what? Stop playing and grow up. You see, we need to create schools in which play and learning are not mutually exclusive of one another. Classrooms that encourage play allow kids to take risks, to make things, to make mistakes, to learn from those mistakes, and then understand it's okay to make mistakes. So tonight I'm going to challenge you to, to do this. If this doesn't this mindset isn't reflected in your classroom or your, your school or your business or your life, I'm going to challenge you to get in touch with that inner child and try playing again and just see what happens. You see, I really enjoyed Ted's TED Talks. They're, they're awesome. We're exposed to a lot of great ideas. But what do we ever do with those ideas when we leave? You see, I think it's time for us to stop just listening 
and start doing. See, we can all be Imagineers. We can all find our story. We can all give voice to it, and we can all impact others' lives with it. So let's dream it, and let's do it. Let's make our community, let's make our schools, let's make our homes, let's make our lives show places of beauty, beauty and magic. Thank you.